A secret drawer popped open. I knew that publication date would be significant. At last, I was going to discover Madovsky's secrets. It certainly wasn't Madovsky's sock drawer. Hey, Nico, come see this. I think we've struck gold. Hang on, I'm coming. Look, a letter from a guy called Gainin. His company, Wolfram, want to purchase La Maledizio. They're offering way over the asking price. Anything connecting Madovsky to Vera? Well, let's see. Here we go. A lease for Vera security. Aha! Then we have the proof we need. Hang on, what's this? Expenses for a Mr. Shears. Waterloo Motors, one helmet. These are from Paris. Madame La Trex. <clears throat> Hotel Britannique. Pizza. Nico. Pizza. I think your friend Shears might just be Henri's killer. Charles, what have we got ourselves into? I, I just heard the front door close. Madovsky's coming. Put everything back in order, quick! Right. He'll never suspect we just ransacked this house for evidence. Jules, the coin! Damn, no time. Look cool, Nico. I'll handle this. I apologize for the lengthy wait. As you can imagine, my time is at a premium. That's fine, Mr. Madovsky. I think we're almost finished anyway. And payment? Very soon, monsieur. Very soon. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Is that a first edition of War and Peace? Of course. Printed in 1869. A great year for my country's literature. And Tolstoy is the master. Nice collection of medals you have there, Mr. Madovsky. I earned them serving my country. Anywhere interesting? Chechnya. Ever been there? Uh, no, can't say I've had the pleasure. Is that a picture of you with Colonel Gaddafi? A deeply wonderful man. He was a great fan of the Impressionists. Well, he certainly left quite an impression on Libya. So, what brought you into the art business, Mr. Madovsky? Oh, an eye for great artists, an appreciation of fine culture, and a love of <laughs> what you Americans call the greenback. You must be upset at the theft of La Maledizio. Yes, I'm disappointed that someone would kill for such a minor piece. So this Hobbs guy, good friend of yours, is he? No, we simply have a business arrangement. We've been through this already. Now please, if you're quite finished, I'm a busy man. Thank you for your time, Monsieur Madovsky. We'll be in touch soon. Well, no prizes for guessing where we go now. Hobbs is place, right? Got it in one. Madovsky's pretty shady, don't you think? He bought our act, though. You make a pretty good insurance man, Georges. Yeah, who'd have thought it? By the time he realizes we're not assessing his claim, we'll have cracked the case and be toasting our success. Here's hoping. Looks like rain. Come on, let's get that cab. Taxi! I think we just stepped off the London tourist trail. I guess this Hobbes character doesn't like visitors.
Not the kind of place you'd expect to find a restorer of old masters. Unless you didn't want to attract attention. He's attracted ours. Let's see what Mr. Hobbs knows about La Maledixio. And let's try and get a look inside that portfolio. I popped open the van's hood. I'd need the keys to start the engine. I had no reason nor any desire to steal Hobbs's van. I decided to leave the handbrake alone. Slasha. It was Hobbs's mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of mail snooping. It was a short debate, and I won. I don't think there's anyone home. There's a light on upstairs. There was definitely someone home. I'd pounded that door until my hand hurt. We were going to have to find another way to attract Hobbs' attention. I'd pounded that. We were going to have to. I wouldn't have been able to break the chain or the padlock. Mr. Rickenbacker, I've got some new information. You better have some good news, Stobart. I absolutely do. Go on, then. Impress me. I went to visit Medofsky, the owner of the painting, and Vera Security. Go on. I found some paperwork that proves Medofsky stole his own painting. <laughs> Great work. But we're going to need more. You have to find the painting. Now wasn't the best time to call Reckenbacker. Vera Sec I didn't need I decided to open the letter. Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs's temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. This could come in useful. The letter advised Mr. Hobbs. The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. 
It was the van's engine. I didn't really have any reason to sabotage it. A bundle of wires came into the engine bay from the dashboard. Many of the wires seemed to lead nowhere. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it. A loose wire hung from the horn. If I had some spare cable, I could connect it to the other horn. It was one of two horns. It was the van. Piles of junk, mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious looking old clothes. George Stobart. Ah, Monsieur Stobart. I trust you have obeyed my instructions not to leave Paris. Of course, Inspector. Good. You clearly know which side your cookie is buttered. Now, I require your presence before a reconstruction. I see. Twelve o'clock sharp, monsieur. Or, as you would say, high noon. Hey, sure. Any failure to comply, and I shall have you extraordinarily rendered. Have a nice day now. And you? That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it. I had found just what I needed. Two lengths of wire. engine bay was a mess. I snipped the wire in half. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the horn. Everything was wired up. The horn had power. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now, what are you doing in my yard? Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Hobbs, but... Well, that could have gone better. He's not exactly the friendliest of characters. I decided to give it another blast. For crying out loud, will you leave my van alone? Sorry, uh, just need a quick word, Mr. Hobbs. Hello there. We'd like to discuss some restoration work with you. Then make an appointment. I'm busy. This Hobbs guy doesn't exactly like visitors. There must be some angle we can use to talk our way inside. I decided to give it another...
you two again. What is it this time? Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up. About time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Uh, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra 20 quid, because I need you with your kit up. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. Oi, what do you think you're doing? Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to take a look at some of your pictures. You're very good. I know. And that portfolio is private. I'm not paying you to go up around my studio. Get your blooming clothes off. Sorry. A variety of liquor bottles, all empty. Hey, I'm still drinking that. It was a solid warehouse door. I didn't need to sit. It was time for action. I wasn't going to mess around with that wiring. It didn't seem quite right. How about a top up, Mr. Hobbs? Thanks, but I've already got a glass full. variety of liquor bottles. It was a solid warehouse. The fuse box was emitting a sinister buzzing sound. Should have been condemned years ago. It didn't seem... It was... I'd forgotten. thermostat looked old. Oh, you. Get down from there. It's private. Oh, sorry. Hey, Nico, got any ideas? We need to take a look inside that folder. Oi, you two. I didn't want to play around with the negligee. Those days are long gone. But I wondered who it did belong to. My, my. <laughs> if it isn't George Stobart. Lady... Piermont. Oh, my. You're... Naked? <laughs> of course. As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself en pelotas. 
Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. That day was the day the night nurse had begun. Trapped, smothered, choking on lavender. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. Oi, what are you doing with a blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life in every way. How about another whiskey? Well, don't mind if I do. Wary of any more life-changing surprises, I decided against exploring behind the screen. Lady Piermont. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out in here. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> 